everyone, I'm Julie Lachman, naturopathic doctor. I'm here today with Ashlyn Zinkmund, yes. recent graduate from University of Bridgeport. And today I'm here really to learn what she's looking for in terms of building her practice and starting a new career. And so I want to help the students. And so I'm really here and excited to learn what you want to learn from us practicing doctors that it's going to make your life a lot easier. So tell us, tell us, Ashlyn, what you did learn in school and then kind of bring me up to where you are today. I know you had some business classes. You got the resume thing down. Mm -hmm. You probably did a business plan. Yeah. You probably did a marketing plan. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that you did in school that you found was helpful in terms of business? Yeah. So, um... I, I, we actually just had our business class like this past year. So I just graduated in May and we had um, two semesters of a business class. One where we essentially, you know, were able to beef up our resume and learn things like that. Um, and that was helpful just to get all of that prepared for people that wanted to apply for residencies exactly. and stuff like that. And then the second, um, I would say was substantially more informative just the day-to-day -day business kind of things and just in terms of things that we had never heard before so it really was like really like a broad just introduction to all these terms that we had literally never heard before so I mean for me anyway just never having been in the business world so um, what we essentially learned in that class was we didn't learn a ton about marketing so that would be something that I would say we could certainly use more help with in our profession and especially starting off um, just so we don't put out a ton of money and make exactly. <laughs> some mistakes of other people that already know what mistakes not to make. Um, but yeah, so we did learn how to make a business plan, um, which was pretty much the primary focus and how to register a business. Great. What is an LLC? Yep. What is a tax ID? Mm -hmm. What is our NPI number? And mm -hmm. just, we did learn some, uh, financial planning strategies, Great. um, which were a good start, but I think financial planning strategies are always like, a, that's like a huge topic to kind of cover. So more advice with that kind of stuff is always welcome. You mean, mean budgeting in terms of business months? And yeah, month day? Okay. yeah, essentially. Not like, like retirement. How, no, no, no. <laughs> but like, you know, how much is realistic for, you know, we all kind of have this a similar amount of loans and right. what is, you know, what is a good cost of rent or like mm -hmm. what should your overhead cost? Mm -hmm. What is too much? Like there's so much to think about. There's so many components of things, I feel like. So bringing it to a real world situation. Yeah. Like rents in this area range from this amount to this amount for yeah. X amount of square foot mm -hmm. um, and so on. Okay, great. So I can definitely, you know, address that at least in, in my market here um, in this area. And then you can extrapolate it with cost of living index to wherever you might be. Right. Um, so what are some of those terms that you already did learn, financial or business terms? Like key performance <laughs> indicators, KPI, or haven't heard of that uh, one. <laughs> I just learned that one last year. Yeah, so, so that was don't for know me. that one. Okay. I wouldn't say we learned a ton of terminology as far as financial planning goes. Mm -hmm. We were just very much made aware, like, hey, there's a bunch of stuff that's gonna happen that you're gonna have to register for, and it's gonna be expensive, and right. like yep. a website costs money, and like yep. just kind of an introduction to that real world stuff that costs money that sometimes it seems like will all come together magically right. but you really have to put a lot of thought into it and um also just in terms of like being you know systematic with it like mm -hmm. what do you do first like right it just feels like a lot it's like it's all you graduate once. and then there's this huge scramble like oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to make my website. Like, I have to go decorate my office. Like, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it really important what my business name is and how right. cool my logo is? And now I need business cards. Right. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I have to get patients in. So, right. like, <laughs> it feels like everything's happening at once. So just kind of, you know, like, sh shadowing certainly I know has helped me just see, you know, how a business runs. But just asking those questions and finding out from people, like, you know, how did you start out? Mm -hmm. Like, what did you do for a week? Or like, what were you waiting on getting done? And what did you do while you were waiting? Right. And just like those really detailed things, not just saying like, these are things that you have to do, but just like the real nitty gritty of like, you know, a month to six months of like trying to so, start something. Right. So month <laughs> yeah. one, here's, you know, your three patients or whatever. Right. Here's how much you might make. Here's your overhead. And then month two, here's how many patients you might see. Here's your overhead. Yeah. When are you going to start, you know, cutting yourself a salary and things right. like that? Okay. Right. And being able to track yourself business-wise as well. Because, right. of course, you know, we're tracking our patients. We're making sure they're getting better. But, like, our, we need to make sure we're doing well right. in so everything. Right. So I actually just so. started a, a document that my office manager does every Friday. And it tracks 
key performance indicators mm -hmm. of like gross revenue, net revenue, product sales, um, a couple specific things that I want to track in terms of things that I'm sending out. We do homeopathic kits, um, referrals from my uh, man my uh, marketing person, how mm -hmm. many does she come in, how many hydrotherapies we have. So if you have a service, you can track like IV therapies or whatever it is separately um, if that's an important marker. So anything that, things that you track, improve. Right. And that's a really cool thing to know. Well, can I, so as part of our training, can I just give you my spreadsheet and you fill it in? Right. Right. Um, so then right. you have something to do. And yeah. Because like, if we know those things while we're getting all this stuff started, right. we're going to know how we're growing instead of not knowing to start this. And can I send you my brochure from the AANP that I got special from them, but it's bigger now and mm -hmm. it's on like this quarter fold thingy and you just put in your address on the back instead of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I have a hydrotherapy brochure. Can I just send that over to you so you don't have to reinvent something yes, like that right um, and then you'll make your own brochure and put your logo on it and we just use you know some online services for that it's pretty easy mm -hmm. um, but one thing about brochures is you don't want to say like you know IVs have this nutrient and this nutrient and this nutrient does this and that you want to say you're gonna have our patients report more energy better immune function better sports recovery whatever it is so you always want to go for the nail and not the hammer because right. That's not why they're coming in. Right. And that's important info, too, because, you know, we didn't go to school for sales or marketing. Exactly. And so these are the these are the points that I'm assuming most of us are being or lacking, you right. know, and we don't like to be salesy because we're really trying to help people. But there's a good, I think, a healthy mm -hmm. medium between you have to sell yourself. There's a psychology you know? to it. And so there's three things that have to happen. The patient has to know they have a problem. And if they're calling you, they probably do. Mm -hmm. um, but when I go to a fair, and there's a special way that I do fairs to book people, you do a certain screening, and there's a script that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And so they may come in and think they're perfectly healthy, but they're on three medications, and their blood pressure is high because you just checked it, and their pH is low, and they don't taste your zinc on the zinc tally test. Mm -hmm. So you've already identified four health areas that are of serious concern that their other providers haven't even looked at. Right, and it's important to hone in on those things that – we as naturopathic doctors can do differently mm -hmm. instead of just saying like, oh, well, we do preventative medicine, but you don't have a problem. What other tools are you going to bring to, you know, grab people oh, to they, help them, well, they have you know, problem. to help so, them and let them know if they have a problem. But they might not know the problem. I met exactly. a guy at a lunch and he's like, oh, I have type 2 diabetes. I'm like, that is really severe. Mm -hmm. He was like 35. And I was reading um, this book by um, Dr. Nemechek, and I'm just looking at it on my shelf here, and he was saying, he's a medical doctor, and he was saying when he was training in the 80s or something in school, they brought all the residents into this one treatment room because this 50-year-old guy had diabetes. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, he's so young and have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. So now I have this guy who had diabetes that I met, and he didn't even think it was a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is a serious condition that's going to shorten your life. You told right. me you just had a daughter. You're not going to live that long. Um, so so the first thing is they have to know they have a problem. This guy's never going to become a patient because he doesn't know he have a problem, has a mm -hmm. problem. But when you do these tests at the at the fairs, like I do the oral pH strips and show them, hey, you're acidic. Like, that's not good. Cancer grows in an acidic environment. Mm -hmm. And you do these tests and you show them that they have a problem, how that relates to their symptom. You do a certain script with them that gets out what really their concerns are. Like, well, maybe they can't participate in a certain sport or activity and then you book them with a deposit and then they come in most of the time so there's a way that we do fairs for example and you don't just go and have a table and say oh yeah I can help you with that because they're not going to book and so there's a way that we do that I don't want you to be wasting your time paying for these fairs going to these fairs wasting your whole Saturday afternoon and coming back with maybe a patient right and so because that's what I used to do and Somehow it magically I got a couple people mm -hmm. um, or like I got one lady. She's like, oh, I met you three years ago at the Healthy Living Festival. I'm like, OK. Um, mm -hmm. Then she came in. So you never know um, who's going to come in. Sometimes you just get lucky. But um, if you do it systematically, you're going to like get luckier and that's always good. Um, so I wanted to do this training for students and recent grads. Also, if you're a resident, you know, you're coming off your residency, you're going to have your own practice or if you've been hired by somebody, but now you, you're you realizing like it's a fee split and you got to get your own people anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people don't realize when you work with somebody, like what does that mean? Right. Are you salaried or are you fee shared or are you really just renting a space from their office? Mm -hmm. If you're renting a space from their office, you have no control over anything. Like what's the website? Can you post something on your website? Because when I started out, I, we drove by that place today, right? Right. It was, they had their own website and I couldn't change it. And like for like six months, I'm like I got to get this updated. Mm -hmm. And so I just ended up with my own website. But if you're working in somebody else's office, you don't have control over anything. I think people don't realize that, that they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to get patients from this doctor I'm working with. 
not necessarily. Yeah. Well, and I feel like not only with, you know, certain patient situations, but with either an employer or whether it's dealing with business situations that maybe are uncomfortable for those of us that haven't ever dealt with it before. Like it can be hard to want to just like plunder down those walls and kind of like get into it. Cause like, it's scary. And I think a mm-hmm. lot of times, mm-hmm. um, in the naturopathic community, especially when you're a recent grad, like I know for myself, like I feel shy or like, I feel like, like I don't have all the confidence that like I can get from point A to point B. So like just being, um, given that information and, just gaining confidence from seeing that like somebody else did it I think is really helpful because you know we know that we deserve a place in the healthcare community and we want to help people and you kind of just have to get that confidence to be able to do what you want to do so and I think the students graduating you know they're they're hesitant about their medical abilities Mm -hmm. but then they don't have any of the other abilities um and so you know when I've been in practice with like seven years, I kind of, you know, I don't have the patience for, for other stuff anymore. Yeah. Um, I just want to get get it done and get the people in, get them better, get them out. And so, and we have systems for that. So I was telling you about this um, guy who I met who had been out of school for probably over a year and he had mm-hmm. a couple people call him and they didn't book. And I'm like, he can totally help them. He's really smart. Um, he's not getting paid and they're not getting better. Mm-hmm. And that's not okay with me. And so when we go through this script of what to say when people call and you book them in a certain way of booking them, getting a deposit, um, and not just booking one visit. I book three initial visits, and they pay for it all up front. So mm-hmm. I know they're going to come in for one because they deposit, paid a deposit. Right. And two, they've already paid for their second and third visit at their first visit. Mm-hmm. Because if you take my online seminar here, you'll see that there are certain things like the first visit – we do the intake, the second visit's the plan, mm-hmm. and then the third visit, um, you know, we do some question and answer and maybe some other things yeah. later. So, so knowing these systems. Yeah, knowing these systems. will be very helpful. all written out, and, like, every time I change something, I just, like, message my office manager, hey, can you add this to the system? Because something fell through the cracks. This one right. person didn't get called. And sometimes when we look at people, if they've been booked and they have to change their visit, I said, if they're more than two weeks out, they have to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I just tell my office manager – to say, I'm sorry, I'm not authorized to move the visit more than two weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you know what? They're going to fall off. And that's when you talk about momentum. We were mm-hmm. talking about that earlier today regarding um, you know, political and stuff we're doing here in, here in our state. Mm-hmm. When you have momentum, if it goes off, there's week one, there's week two, I got to see them again or else I'm not going to see them. I'm going to lose them and they're not going to get better. Right. So I want to help you guys go through scheduling systems. I have reminder systems. Um you know, call, what do you say on your call for that? How do we schedule the, the return calls? What do we do with an acute visit? Mm-hmm. Like, I still have some messages I have to get back to, but I knew if it was something urgent, it would be on my calendar mm-hmm. today. Or I would have gotten a message from my office manager, hey, can you talk to somebody at 3 o'clock today, even though we don't see people Friday at 3, um, because so and so's having diary. You know, sure, I'll do it. But, but that's going to be on the schedule, because mm-hmm. if it sits there and it's tomorrow, you know, they're sick. Right. So so just having a schedule for things, having a system for things, that's what I want to give you guys so right. you don't have to reinvent everything. Right. I also want to tell you the two two places I would never, ever advertise or even get a free listing ever. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you some online stuff that's worked for me, um, how to set up a fair and talks and things like that. So those are some things that I just want to share with you guys because mm. – I need more colleagues. Yeah. We all do. Yeah, of course. We all do. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for coming yeah. in. And um, hopefully you learned something today, shadowing yeah. me here in the office. And mm-hmm. thanks for helping you know your colleagues with some things that I now I know I need to share with you. Yeah. So that's really helpful for me. Yeah. Thank you as well. Great. <laughs>